Analytical Chemistry 1, Lesson 48. The chelate effect is the ability of polydentate ligands to form more stable metal complexes than is formed with similar monodentate ligands. The entropy difference, arising from, from the fact that the polydentate ligand brings multiple bonding sites to the metal atom at the same time, is what drives this increased stability. Chelation is an important chemical process. While we will study it mainly as a means of quantifying metal ion concentrations in solution, the concept is actually widespread in biological systems. More than half of all biologically active enzymes have a metal center as the chemically active site. Hemoglobin, the principal oxygen transporting enzyme in humans, is a well-known iron-bearing protein. The hemoglobin beta subgroup is the iron binding site. There are four such sites per hemoglobin as shown here in green. Metals generally bind with oxygen, nitrogen, or sulfur atoms in proteins. Plastocyanin is an enzyme in plants for transporting electrons. It uses copper as an active center and is bound through four amino acid residues. Vitamin D12, B12 is the largest and most complex vitamin. It has a cobalt ion bound to five nitrogen atoms with a sixth bond to various R groups, depending upon its current state. Chlorophyll is an enzyme that chelates a magnesium ion. It is, a, it is key in harvesting light to produce electrons for chemical processes in plants. Chelation therapy is a medical treatment for various conditions characterized by an excess of some heavy metal atoms in the body. A genetic, genetic condition that affects the production of the beta subunit in hemoglobin is called thalassemia. It requires normal red blood cell transfusions on a continual basis. The problem with this is that the body does not readily remove iron, and so the patient starts to build up 4 to 8 grams of iron per year in their bodies. This is toxic. Chelation therapy involves the introduction of chelating ligands to mop up the excess iron and then transport it out of the body. Several have been used and new ones are being developed. Deferoxamine is a common one. The two oxygens on each of the three hydroxamate groups are the six ligand binding sites for the iron. This therapy requires overnight subcutaneous transfusions as much as five times a week for life. But no transfusions leads to death within a couple of years. Chelation therapy is also used for heavy metal poisoning. Dimercaprol is a tridentate ligand used to treat poisoning by arsenic, mercury, gold, and lead. It was first developed as an antidote for lewisite, an arsenic-based chemical warfare agent developed in World War II. Penicillamine is another tridentate ligand used to bind copper in treating Wilson's disease. And EDTA, <clears throat> which will be our main focus in this course, is also used in the case of lead poisoning. So the chelate effect is very important, important but, and let's look more closely at our EDTA ligand. Ethylene diamine tetracetic acid, or EDTA, is a hexaprotic acid. The six pKa values are given here. The first four are, four are protons on the carboxylic acid groups, while the last two are the two tertiary amines. Why is the symbol usually given to represent the basic EDTA molecule? When it has four protons on it, H4Y, it is the neutral molecule. Those with ionic behavior transfers two protons from the carboxylic acid moieties to the nitrogens, giving two positively charged regions and two negatively charged regions. Still, it is overall neutral. But it is the fully deprotonated form, Y4- minus, that has all six ligand binding sites open so it can capture a metal ion. Here is a fractional composition graph of the seven EDTA species as a function of pH. Note that the high pH range is that where the Y4- species begins to dominate. The ability for EDTA to chelate a metal ion with all six ligand binding sites is pH dependent. Recall what the fractional composition means. It refers to the ratio of the concentration of EDTA in the Y4- form divided by the sum of the concentration of EDTA in all the other free EDTA forms. Now by free, we mean all forms that are not chelated with the metal ion. So note that this is not the same as a formal EDTA concentration. A considerable amount of uh, EDTA may be tied up in chelation with the metal ions, and in fact, we hope that it is mostly chelated with the metal ions. Here is a table of the fractional composition of this fully deprotonated form as a function of pH. We will need to refer to this table throughout our calculations. While we could use the known expression for fractional composition, we will just choose questions that have the pH fixed with a buffer at the pH values in this table. 
If you were to ever have a problem with the pH between the values listed, you could either try to estimate it by interpolation or just calculate it using the known expression. But for our class, we will stick to these tabulated values. Note that it is only above a pH of about 10.4 that the Y4 minus form is the dominant form in the solution. A metal ligand equilibrium constant is sometimes called a formation or stability constant. In the case of the Y4 minus form of EBTA reacting with, well, for example, chromium 3 plus ion, we would write this down. Remember that in most instances, we are using the shorthand notation of Y for the EDTA molecule, and that works most of the time. But if you're working with, for instance, the yttrium 3 plus ion, then its symbol is also Y, and you'd have to adapt your notation appropriately. We'll try to avoid confusing notational situations in our class, but remember that it is just a notational convention we are using. Working with this equilibrium expression is made easier using the fractional composition at a fixed pH and the free EDTA concentration. We've chosen to write down this equilibrium expression in terms of the reaction with Y4-, but it could have been done with any of the other forms. All of the equilibria need to be satisfied simultaneously, but with this fractional composition, we can craft it in terms of all of the free EDTA. If one looks at the structure of this octahedrally bound EDTA, it is apparent that there is some strain in the rings formed as the EDTA wraps around the metal ion. This strain is relaxed somewhat by the oxygen ligands uh, being drawn back towards the nitrogens. This has the effect of opening up some extra space for a seventh binding position. In an aqueous solution, it is water that steps in to fill this site. A capped trigonal prismatic structure can accommodate these seven ligand sites. A wide collection of metal ions choose this seven coordinate complex, including iron 2 plus, magnesium 2 plus, ruthenium 3 plus, and cobalt 3 plus, and many more. The equilibrium expressions are not altered by this fact since the water is present as a solvent and we treat its activity as being just one we can leave it out of the equilibrium expression without any adverse consequences. Larger metal ions and ions with a larger charge can open up to create eight coordinate complexes, which pick up two additional water ligands. Calcium 2+, plus, erbium 3+, plus, and zirconium 4+, plus are examples of such a bonding configuration, and it can be accommodated as a square prismatic structure. Many of the lanthanide and actinide ions can go one step further and make space for a third water ligand. The tricapped trigonal prismatic structure can characterize such ions as plutonium 4 plus, which is nine coordinate with EDTA and three water ligands. But note that with all of these potential complications, the added water ligands do not alter the equilibrium expressions. Our mathematical approach is robust.